I believe there's going to be major breakthrough on the behalf of every woman in here. So I'm praying that you have ears to hear today and you uh, uh, open your heart for God to move you forth in a greater area. In the 11th chapter of 2 Samuel is the story of David and Bathsheba. Many of y'all know the story, David and Bathsheba. And um, verse 2 says, And it came to pass uh, in the evening tide that David arose uh, from off his bed and walked up on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. I guess so when they naked, huh? <laughs> she was taking a bath, and he looking at her, and she was very beautiful to look upon. But David was moved by what he saw. So David, you know the story, David then asked for Bathsheba to come to him and, uh, and then he then uh, committed adultery with Bathsheba who was married to Uriah uh, the Hittite. And then uh, it says in verse four, in verse four, and David then sent messenger and took her, which underline the word took her, and she came in unto him and he laid with her. Now it doesn't give every little detail uh, but most people that talk about Bathsheba give Bathsheba a bad rap. Bathsheba uh, was taking this bath of purification. You see here in verse four, and it says, and he lay with her for she was purified from her uncleanness. Her uncleanness was that she had just finished her menstrual cycle. And then under the law, once you finish your menstrual cycle, you had to do a certain bath of purification. And then, David caught her doing this when he should have been on the battlefield fighting with his soldiers. He was there on the rooftop when he shouldn't have been there. And so she assumed that the king would probably go on anyway, but the king wasn't where he was supposed to be. So then the king then brought her and then forced himself, I believe, because he's the king, he's in authority. He then pushed himself up on her out of his lust and then she ended up conceiving a child. And then this child now is born, is, is, she's pregnant, and then she turned around and tells him, and then he turned around and then tried to get uh, uh, her husband, uh, Uriah, to come back, the Hittite, and to have sex with her. And it didn't work because he was so loyal to his soldiers. He said, well, how can I have sex or have this pleasure with my Wife, when my soldiers are out on the battlefield fighting and they're not being able to enjoy. And so why should I now be able to be involved in this? So he slept on the porch and we're not going. When David found out he was furious, he made a letter, sent uh, Uriah, is that, am, I saying, am I saying his name right? Out to the battlefield and then had him killed. So then David committed murder. Now David, this is the only blemish, which is a big blemish in David's life, but David did something to turn his life around that God would call David a man after his own heart. Isn't that something? And uh, Bathsheba, Bathsheba then turns around and does something that causes her to have five more sons. And one of her sons was so famous that everybody knows his name and his name is Solomon. There was a Solomon born but could not be born unless some things took place in Bathsheba's life. There was a king that could never be the king that God wanted him to be until there was a turnaround in the life because the sword was still upon him. He was cursed, but he did something after, after Naaman the prophet said that David, you have sinned and he told him of adultery and murder and David fell on his face and cried out and then became so repentive that God said, you shall not die now. Because death was his penalty. Isn't it something that even at that time God had mercy upon him because he did something that turned God's heart towards him? And then he turned around and God said, but the sword should never leave your house. And he turned around and then um, uh, she had these other kids after that and God still blessed his kingdom even though he had all kind of chaos going on. Are you with me? Now, now, I just want you to see that because I'm tying in Bathsheba with David <clears throat> for turnaround. I'm tying in also Peter and Moses. Now, y'all know about Peter. Peter, 
uh, denied Jesus. <coughs> he denied Jesus, and when he denied Jesus, he was a disciple of Christ. He had been with Jesus, and then he denied Jesus, but then Peter turned around. Something happened in Peter's life that turned him around, that Peter turned around and became a great disciple and a great soldier for the kingdom of God. Y'all remember that? Peter, in fact, when, he, when they killed Peter, he, they were going to put him on the cross. He said, I can't be like my Lord. They had him hang him upside down. They did an upside down cross with Peter. Then we see the same thing with Moses. Moses killed a man. And out of his killing, he went into exile for 40 years. And God still brought him back because something happened that caused God to still bless him and use him. That he came become, became one of the greatest deliverers known to mankind. Moses became a deliverer, but something had to happen to get Moses to that place. Something had to happen for David and Bathsheba and Peter to cause their lives to be changed. And I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. Aren't you excited about that today? Because I can tell you today, not one of you ladies are going to leave here the same way you came. And in fact, I can be bold enough to say that your life is going to be changed in such a big way that your family for generations are going to be blessed behind what happens here today. In fact, I can even say a lot of you men in here, lives are going to be better today. Y'all ready? Now, now, uh, now, so it's talking about, so what we had to deal with, what David dealt with, what Bathsheba, my main character is Bathsheba, and the rest of them deal with, they had to deal with their past. Now, everybody has a past. Is that right? And all of us have some ugliness in our past. Yes. Push your neighbor and say he's getting ready to talk about you right now. <laughs> Come on, push them one more time until I think you got more than I do. <laughs> we all got some ugliness. In fact, some of you got some stuff you don't want nobody to know about your past. I'm going to come over here. Some of you got some stuff you don't want nobody to know about your past. There's some things that should that happen in your life and you have now did everything you could to dis, disregard it, disconnect from it. You have did everything you can to be able to cover it up, try, try to act like it didn't happen, but it still happened. It's still there. Oh, I'm doing a good job right now. In order for you to move forth in what God wants to do in your life, you have to come to the place of dealing with your past. Someone said to the neighbor, say, deal with your past. Deal with your past. <laughs> now, Bathsheba dealt with her past. Now, when I was looking up Bathsheba, it said that how Bathsheba had to deal with her past or her sins or her wrong choices, her regrets, her decisions. She had to deal with those areas in order for her to move forward and experience spiritual power, progress, and purpose in her life. In other words, she would have never experienced the progress, spiritual power, or the purpose for her life if she wouldn't have dealt with it. And there, these are the issues that we have to understand because all of us have a past. Now, I want you to write this down in your notes. You can't get on with your future, holding on to the past. You can't get on with your future, holding on to the past. See, a lot of us are holding on to some things in our life we need to let go. We need to get out of our life. All of us have a past, some good, some bad. And, and we, some of us got warm memories of love and satisfaction. And then others have memories of regret, remorse, blame, scars, uh, anger, bitterness. We got all kind of negative things in our past that in order for me to go forth, I can't get to where God wants me to get to. I can't have what God wants me to have. He's not able to fulfill in my life what he wants to fulfill because I got issues. Because you got issues. And most of the women that I know and men that basically, but I'm talking about the mothers today, are trying to raise a family. Trying to raise a family with a bunch of hurt and regret and remorse, bitterness, and she needs help when she's trying to help her kids. Amen. She needs deliverance when she is trying to help bring her children up and her children are becoming products of what she is because she never dealt with what she is. 
She never dealt with what's going on in her life because of her shame or her uh, bad choices or decision in the life. And therefore, the enemy has been able to manipulate her and has happened for a lot of us for generations. It's been passed down. We call them generational curses because nobody never dealt with it. Everybody tried to hide grandmama's sin. Or mama's sin. Mama didn't deal with it. So mama was always hurting. Mama was always in pain. Mama was always crying. Mama was always challenged with, with her past, but she didn't know how to deal with it because her past was so big and nobody ever instructed her how to deal with it. So she was trying to move on with her life, but she couldn't get nowhere because her past was too heavy. It was too weighing her down too much. Here is a special rose for all you moms out there. And thank you for praying, guiding, loving, teaching, giving so much to us. We love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day.